On this episode of Cape Media News, the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe celebrates their annual powwow. We'll head down to Bismore Park in Hyannis to check out the Hyannis High Arts Artist Shanties and get an inside look at the Cape Cod Baseball League's Chatham A's. These stories and more, this is Cape Media News. Welcome everyone, this is Cape Media News, your local authentic newscast for Cape Cod. I'm Sarah Colvin. Thank you so much for tuning in today and joining us for Cape Media News. Well, it's celebration time for the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe. Powwow was held last weekend for the very first time on their own land. But as we'll learn, that land status is in jeopardy. Today, I'm Jesse Little Doe Baird, and I am the vice chairwoman for the Mashpee Wampanoag Tribe. Welcome! It was a traditional homecoming for the Mashpee Wampanoag Tribe's 97th annual powwow, celebrated for the first time on their own sacred grounds. This is the first year we're back home on what was once powwow grounds, so that's why it's called the homecoming. And that's also poignant because we're trying to keep this home. The United States Department of the Interior granted the tribe land trust status in 2015, but a lawsuit brought against the U.S. by residents of Taunton challenges that. Your land is everything. You don't have powwow without your land. You don't have a place to live. Families don't come together, so you don't have community. Your land is everything. You're standing on sovereign land, a reservation. We have our own tribal court, tribal police, tribal elders. I mean, we are self-sufficient in that respect, and that's due to the fact that we are, for one, federally recognized, and now, as of 2015, we are awarded or granted that trust status. The Mashpee Wampanoag Tribe Reservation Reaffirmation Act asks Congress to stand behind their initial ruling. We're looking for any kind of support we can to help educate and bring further awareness to our efforts to stop the potential for our land into trust decision that was made in 2015 to be reversed. So we have some legislation currently in committee, both and the Senate as well as a um, Congress. We have two bills. We have co-sponsors on both sides of the aisle, Democrats and Republicans across the country. It's pretty uh, amazing, fascinating actually, to, to think that such bipartisan support has, has taken place on our behalf. We have an intergovernmental <laughs> agreement with the town of Mashpee that calls for them to support legislative efforts that we have for trust lands, um, and they are definitely living up to that agreement. Awesome. We're so thankful to our um, state reps um, and our congressional reps. We're so happy um, that they see how scary this is. Um, and it has implications not just for Mashpee, um, but for tribes across the country. This would be the first time since the termination era of tribes that the federal government has taken land away from a tribe. The tribe is hoping to schedule a hearing on the bill. We're simple people. If we say the sky is blue, the sky is blue. We're not looking for anything else different. We're just asking for a simple request. And that is that the land be put into trust so that they can become a sustainable, self-sustainable nation, which they have a right to be. Your ability to have a say in how you educate your children, how you police your people, your um, family court laws, your tribal laws, all of that is rooted in sovereignty. Given the fact that we've been here for 12,000 years, I mean, we're talking back to the Bible, multiply by six, and this is how long we've been here. Uh, we have a right to hold less than one half of 1% of our original territory. That's what we're talking about. We are the sole surviving of nine tribes that signed a land title for Plymouth Colony to form, which ultimately became the United States of America. So it's ironic that we would be here with hat in hand, begging to have control over our own territory. So powwow is about that. It's a traditional homecoming. This is our home. This territory is our home, um, and we intend to hold it by any means necessary. The 97th annual powwow was held in Mashpee the first weekend in July. 
For Cape Media News, I'm Gabrielle Rawson. Mashpee Selectmen voted this week to allow the town to retain the services of a lobbyist to assist in moving that legislation forward. The town of Yarmouth's recycling regulations are changing. We headed over to the transfer station to learn more. If you're recycling in the town of Yarmouth, make sure to separate newspaper from other paper to help comply with some changes being made at the transfer station. Here in the town of Yarmouth, we were told just within the past six months that our newspaper recycling stream was contaminated by everything else in the loads. So what we were submitting as a newspaper load was considered contaminated and so therefore lost its value. At the time, a single newspaper load containing about three to four tons could potentially garner a fee or, or a rebate to the town of Yarmouth in anywhere from 40 to $60 a ton. Because of the contamination of brown bags, glossy ads, mail envelopes with plastic windows, even printer paper. It changed that newspaper load to a mixed paper load and so therefore it began to cost the town money. Newspaper just seems to be the very first thing that we're hearing about. Our commingled stream which contains plastic, aluminum, tin, and glass went from $55 a ton in December of 2017 to $80 a ton in January of 2018. In March of 2018, it went to $90 a ton. So we're really experiencing some heavy costs for our recycling. And so in an effort to save money, Yarmouth is working to ensure recyclables remain uncontaminated. We're pulling out the mixed paper, anything that is not newspaper, and we're putting it into another container. That's been really confusing for our residents mm -hmm. because they've really gotten used to being able to put everything into that newspaper bin. And I think that's something that we really want to get through to people is, is yep, newspapers are great, Newspapers only in the newspaper bin, and then we have what we're calling a mixed paper. Mixed paper includes thin cereal boxes, tissue paper boxes, and other thin cardboard, glass, plastic, tin, all go in commingled, and corrugated cardboard is tossed in a separate bin. I think that everyone struggles with finding enough space inside their home to recycle everything that they need to recycle or that they want to recycle. And glass being the heaviest thing, we, we definitely want to say, give it a quick rinse. I'm not asking you to scrub it. I don't want you to waste water. I, I'm scrub it out and the, the lid can go in one container if it's metal and the glass can go in the other container. But right now we're still sticking, sticking with the commingled. We're not changing that yet. Don't wish it to be a recycle. Ask us, we'll be glad to help you. I try really hard to keep our website updated and there's a lot of people who have questions and they really help me get those answers on the website. So that's, that's the big thing is don't hesitate to send me an email. My address is, email address is on the website. It's rwhitehouse at yarmouth.ma.us. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer them and I'll try to get the answers on the website. A series of public information sessions are scheduled. Visit the town of Yarmouth's website for details. For Cape Media News, I'm Sarah Colvin. Up next, we'll take a look at the Hyannis High Arts Artist Shanties. year in a row, local artists are hawking their wares down by the harbor in Hyannis. Let's head down to Bismore Park and the new Overlook to learn more. Art and culture awaits at the Hyannis Harbor. 
The Artist Shanty program began in 2005. It started with seven artist shanties. Its main goal is an incubator program to support and promote artists and artisans in the town of Barnstable and beyond. This is a program for all Cape Cod artists. My name is Jean Esperson Golden and I'm Textures Jewelry on Cape Cod. I am a metalsmith and I make mainly um, earrings and I make rings. I'm also a seamstress, so I sew um, jewelry bags, I also sew pillows. I take my inspiration a lot from um, nature. I do plan things out and then it just evolves as I make something. This location is great because we can set up and then in the evenings we don't have to take anything down, we can leave it. And it's a great way to promote our art in a be beautiful setting. My name is Alexandria Boudreau. I go by Sandy. I'm a Cape Codder. I've lived here all my life and uh, I get inspired by being down here on the docks. I paint maritime images, a lot of um, boats, fish. As you can see, I have a lot of fish and um, I'm very much inspired by this beautiful place. I, I come down here every day, open up at 11 o'clock and I can't wait to get to work. My name is Jackie McAvoy and it's Cape Natural Soap. I use um, um, a variety of things. I do a lot of essential oils, but I also do fragrance oils that are mixed with essential oils and are phthalate and formaldehyde free. I was just doing farmers markets and craft fairs and it was a lot of one or two day, you know, packing up and it, it's a lot of work and there's so many other competition so you kind of get squeezed in with a lot of other artists of the same and you don't really stand out. Here you have a chance to spend a full week, stand out, and I've, I've gotten a lot of um, regular customers and a lot of opportunities that came from this. This year we have over 100 artists participating. The artists get juried in to the program each and every year. We have artists that have participated for, oh my goodness, all 14 seasons, and we have artists that are brand new. Hi, I'm Elisa Sullivan, and my company is Swirls Jewelry. I like to say that it's fine handcrafted jewelry influenced by a love of family, words, and the sea. I incorporate words in all of my pieces. There's always like a hidden gem in each one. I love using the word joy and hope, and I use a lot of sea glass in my pieces as well, a lot of freshwater pearls, and I'm very influenced by the Cape. I'm a silversmith, and I hand fabricate everything. And what that means is I take wire and sheet metal, um, usually in sterling silver, some gold filled, some copper, I hand cut everything, hand saw everything, it gets sanded and polished, it's all a handmade process. I, I love working here, this has been a, an amazing week, it's a lot of fun. And being here in Hyannis, you're exposed to a lot of people from all over the world, um, and I've sold pieces of jewelry to people all over the world, and even made friends with them and kept in touch with them over the years. And we talk about connecting the dots and bringing people in and around our cultural district to experience all the gems right here in downtown Hyannis. So from the Bismore Park shanties, it's just steps away, really a five minute walk. The season runs May through October. Here at the Harbor Overlook, which is a new location this year, they will run weekends through the fall and right up till Christmas time. So we are really excited for that opportunity as well. I always say the arts know no town lines. So just like the water that flows throughout the Cape, so do our artists and we are so proud to um, help support them in any way. To learn more about the Shanty program, visit artsbarnstable.com. For Cape Media News, I'm Gabrielle Rawson. And you'll find a variety of art and artists at the Shanties this summer, but what you may not find is tattoos. You'll have to go to the Cape Cod Museum of Art for that. We bring you now to an exhibit highlighting the work of tattoo artist Mark Corliss. A new exhibit at the Cape Cod Museum of Art challenges the local artistic norm. Beyond the Tattoo showcases the work of Cape Cod tattoo artist Mark Corliss. It opened on June 21st. So here with Mark Corliss, the artist, the tattoo artist behind this. What is it like to see your work here in an art gallery? Um, to be honest, Sarah, it's really exciting because I don't know if I ever thought it would happen on Cape Cod. It's, it, it, to be welcomed here has been, been really exciting. Everyone here is just so nice and for people to start noticing tattoos as art is, is pretty fun. I'm at work at 7 a.m. I start drawing my tattoos at 7. I start ta tattooing at 11 and I get home to my family at 8 o'clock at night. So for 20 years I've worked at least 60 hours a week. And then you have my clients who go through the pain, 
the time, the money, and it, it, it's just nice to show the world what's what's really involved in the in, in tattooing, serious tattooing. Not only do you have the pictures on the wall, you've got some live models in here too. Yes, uh, tonight I picked some of my favorite people that I knew would be open to doing this, and they're the men are wearing traditional fundoji, which, uh, for lack of better uh, terms, is like a um, a thong. So they, you can actually see their full, you know, body being tattooed. So tell me a little bit about uh, what it feels like to be showing off these very personal, meaningful tattoos uh, in an art gallery. I've never done this before. Uh, it's a little like being an exhibitionist, but in a good way. And I've got a lot of compliments, and a lot of uh, women have come up to me and complimented me on my tattoos. And uh, thank God my wife's here tonight. <laughs> How did you uh, get to be here tonight uh, modeling for this show, and how does it feel to be a part of this uh, art show? I, I love it. It's a little bit nervous at first. You know, I love being able to show off my work. I mean, every day you wear clothes, and you, people don't know what you have underneath your clothing. So once you get to kind of take it all off and expose yourself, for lack of better words, it's, it's great. And I'm very lucky to have them because, I mean, I don't think it's easy to get up and do that. It's definitely not something common on Cape Cod or at the Museum of Art. It reflects art. Personal art, they have, he has used their bodies as a canvas, as a, a painter would use as a canvas. So it, and it's in th three dimensions. I mean, it, it's been a fascinating thing. And what it does is it exposes the Cape to a much wider view of the world. Uh, and sometimes we can be very provincial, but this gives us the opportunity to extend our, our reach and our vision. But it's not just about art. Mark's project Paper Crane provides women who have undergone mastectomies with free, lifelike nipple tattoos. Uh, basically what we do is as many women as I can handle, I'm, I'm giving them free 3D tattoo nipples. Um, sometimes, you know, bilateral or sometimes just one side. And um, we're, we're doing the best we can to keep up with it. There's a lot, there's a huge need for it and it's scary, but we're just doing the best we can and getting every single one done that we possibly can tattoo. He's now working to train others to provide those services in hopes of creating a nationwide network. Here on Cape Cod, he's hoping to expand the minds of art lovers. There's beautiful art here, and maybe sometimes people, just like there's a taboo with tattoos, there might be a taboo with Cape Cod and the art and saying, oh, it's just lighthouses or shells, and um, there's really amazing art here. So I'm hoping to open the younger people's eyes to come here and check it out and help support the art scene. Beyond the Tattoo is on display at the Cape Cod Museum of Art in Dennis, now through August 5th. For Cape Media News, I'm Sarah Colvin. Up next, we'll check in with the Cape Cod Baseball League's Chatham A's. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water too. That'll probably help. You were probably gonna turn down the radio too, so you could focus, right? Probably okay isn't okay. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. The Chatham A's play ball at historic Veterans Field. Gabby Rawson has been following the league all summer. Today we meet the players and coaches of the A's for this week's Cape Cod Baseball League segment. The Cape Cod Baseball League is in its fifth week and teams are battling their way to the top of the leaderboard. This week we met with the Chatham A's. Being up here is just amazing to be honest. It's just such a special place and um, you know, playing out here in front of all the fans and everything, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, this is one of the better places to play in the, on the Cape in terms of the fans and just the surrounding area. It's just a beautiful place and uh, kind of a no-brainer to come back. Uh, I kind of came in as more of a pitcher. That's what I, what I did in high school. It's kind of what I've done. Uh, my, uh, my junior year in college was what I was better at, so I came in more as a pitcher and then started hitting a little bit, kind of had some elbow problems and now I'm a mainstay in the lineup. I mean, this is by far the premier league and, and this is where you want to be if you know, you're a collegiate baseball player and it's going to help your future a ton. And so, you know, regardless of what you do on the field out here, as long as you know you have a good attitude and everything, and come out here and bring it every day, it's going to help you out a ton. 
Major League Baseball scouts come from all over the country to draft players. It's a pressure they're used to. I don't really think about it a whole lot. I just think that if I keep playing the way I'm playing, the way I'm capable of, it'll all work itself out. <laughs> I mean, obviously their presence is there, but you know, if, if you worry too much about that, it kind of affects your play. And so for me, you know, personally, I know a lot of the guys is the same. It's just kind of try and block it all out and just kind of stay focused on what we're trying to do every day and the approach and the plan. And, you know, if we do that, I mean, they'll notice and they'll take notes and do everything like that. But if you worry too much about them, it kind of affects your play. Volunteers and host families are the behind the scenes heroes of the league, opening up their homes and their hearts to players. Cape Cod Baseball League is a unique thing. These programs are volunteers. They give it because they, they're dedicated to the kids, to the community, both. I've stayed with the host family once before my junior year in high school in Oklahoma. And so I think that kind of helped me as far as kind of uh, knowing what to do or kind of how to act around a different family. But they, they really took, took me and my roommate in and made us feel like a part of the family. I mean, family dinners every night until, until baseball started. Um, they're awesome, they're great. You know, she makes me smoothies a lot and has these homemade protein bars that I love and that taste really, really good. So, you know, it's been an awesome experience and I've enjoyed getting to know them. It's kind of just like having like your own like little second family, I guess, so it's, it's a neat experience. The Chatham A's are currently second in their division behind the YD Red Sox. Holiday's powerful pro coaching style has given the players the confidence to give it their all on the field. My plan is to try to play as many guys as I can, uh, try to keep guys fresh as much as I can. Uh, if you're here and you're on our team, you're going to play, and um, you're going to you're going to get you know put in situations where you can succeed, not fail. And uh, this game is so loaded with failure. Uh, try to keep guys from getting too deep into failure and um, you know, not, not let anybody get beat up uh, mentally and emotionally with their play. And um, quite frankly, you know, uh, try to win games along the way. When we click, those games that we do click, and we're uh, hitting the ball and throwing the ball well, uh, then I don't think there's a team here that can beat us. Coaching-wise, a little bit different. Uh, this is more of like a pro style, I'd say, this year than last year. It's more of kind of like laid back. But uh, you know, it's good to, good to be able to get both sides of that. You know, I'm finding out more as the summer goes along that um, it isn't as much about baseball, it's as much about keeping them focused uh, on playing baseball past their college season. In the 44 games they play here, in the 9, 10 weeks they're here, there can be a lot of growth shown. See them while you can because it's great entertainment. For Cape Media News, I'm Gabrielle Rossa. And tonight, Hyannis is at Bourne at 6, YD at Falmouth at 6, Brewster at Harwich at 6.30, Katuit at Wareham at 6.30, Chatham at Orleans at 7. On Saturday, Brewster is at YD at 5, Chatham's at Harwich at 5.30, Wareham at Falmouth at 6, Katuit at Hyannis at 6, Bourne at Orleans at 7. On Sunday, catch Orleans at Brewster at 5, Falmouth at Katuit at 5, Harwich at Wareham at 5.30, Hyannis at Bourne at 6, YD at Chatham at 7. You can find out more at capecodbaseball.org. And that brings another episode of Cape Media News to a close. Thank you so much for watching. You can stay up to date with us online at capemedia.org. You can follow us on Facebook. Just type in Cape Media News. And now on Instagram, our handle, CMN underscore Cape Media News. Keep you up to date on social media and here on Channel 99. For Cape Media News, I'm Sarah Coleman.